being able to detach from the thinking mind and not let it be in the driver's seat all the time, which again, remember how I said it's simple, but does simple doesn't mean easy. That's not easy to do. And that's why I say it's a practice. You're not just going to try these things once or twice and be done with it. It's something you kind of have to weave into day-to-day life. You have to choose these practices or they might choose you and then cultivate them, evolve with them, honor them, and know that communing with your intuitive self, having quiet time alone, paying attention to what's going on in your awareness is in and of itself a spiritual practice. This is by Joy Joanne Season 2. I'm your host, Joanne Chan, and every Wednesday we bring you inspiring stories, powerful message, and fun conversations with me and my special guests and friends. And it's my personal mission to empower you to live and lead a life with joy. This podcast is for you if you're looking for more joy, courage, passion, and purpose in your life. Now let's dive into today's episode and get ready to laugh, learn, and live your life to the fullest. Hi to all my entrepreneurs who are driven and single. If you are tired of swiping through profiles of people who just don't get it, try MillionaireMatch.com. With over 5 million users, you are destined to meet someone who will challenge you intellectually, match your ambitions and love you for you. Join now at MillionaireMatch.com. As a trained evidential psychic medium, intuitive healer, and coach, our guest today has a mission to empower individuals through intuitive guidance and she believes that tarot, psychism, and mediumship are effective healing modalities. It's a mission to raise the standard of care in these areas. She helps others tap into inner wisdom, heal emotional wounds, and navigate life's challenges. Whether it's uncovering hidden strengths or embracing transformative change, she's here today to empower you and guide you toward alignment with your truest self. So guys, help me welcoming the evidential psychic medium, intuitive healer, and mentor, Emily O'Neill. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Excited to have this conversation. Well, before I ask my very first question, what 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 is evidential psychic medium? This is the first time that I'm hearing the term. Yeah, it's a, I feel like it's probably a relatively new term that people haven't heard before. So I think that's a great question to ask. So an evidential psychic medium is a person who is able to uh, work with a sitter or a client and connect to a spirit communicator that they that the client knows and all the information that we bring through from that spirit communication can be validated so it's evidence that the sitter can say yes that is in fact true um, it's not vague information it's not like generalizations or anything like that so we ask our sitters to respond to the information that we bring forward in really specific ways. We don't want to be fed any information beforehand. We'll never ask you for like a a picture of the person you're trying to communicate with. We'll never ask you for details, nothing like that at all. Um, When you work with an evidential psychic medium, you just get to show up to your session and then they'll tap in and they'll bring forward that information and they'll ask you to say, yes, I can understand that. No, I can't or I don't know, or I need a little bit more information in order for me to understand the information that you're coming through. This helps to validate that the communication is true, that it's in fact happening, and that it's we're really connected to someone that you love on the other side. That is really interesting. Yeah. Because like, as you know, like, I mean, based on my own understanding is that a lot of people think these are woo-woo, you know, the un- they are mm-hmm. not they are, they are not real and with this information right then um it's validation like you said right you are able to validate the information that you are uh, receiving so the other question that i'm sure a lot of people ask you every time people ask you this question is how did you first realize your own psychic abilities mm-hmm. i really like that question too because the reality is is everybody has these abilities we're born with them it's just part of being a human being but depending on how you're raised and you know the cultures that you're in or the environments that you're raised in it this may not be something that's cultivated 
in individuals. So I would say that there's two ways that people answer this question. They'll say, I was just born like this and I'm gifted. I think that's true to some degree. We're all born with the skill and ability, but um, you can choose to develop it. So I, hindsight being what it is, have some awareness of having some sensitivities all my life and being able to pick up on information, but because I didn't have a model for that, I didn't know anybody that did it, I didn't know what I was doing. So I spent a lot of the time <laughs> like not realizing, oh, um, I'm walking around and I'm kind of getting some information about people or knowing things before they happen and didn't just thought, didn't make anything of it. And then as an adult, um, I realized that I could do this and help people. And so I sought out different kinds of trainings and development to be able to ensure a high level of care, that I wasn't going to hurt or harm anybody when they came to me for sessions. And I actually, while I feel pretty comfortable saying I always on some level knew that I was psychic, I didn't think I was a medium. And they're actually two very different things things. So psychism means I'm just going to connect to like you and your energy and get information and be able to pass it on to you. Whereas mediumship, there's that third party communicator, the spirit. So it's, they're kind of two different techniques. They work very differently. And I didn't think that I was a medium and I kind of stumbled upon it accidentally actually in a client session. And the client was like, oh, I think you're connected to so-and-so. And I was like, but I, I'm not a medium. I'd I don't know how to do that. And so that's when I realized I can do it and I probably need to work on developing and refining my skill set so that I can do it consistently, effectively, and ethically. So I think that development for people is really important because we learn and grow within community. We can practice. We can figure out where our strengths and weaknesses are in terms of our psychic and mediumistic abilities, and then we can work to grow them and learn. And I think that there are a lot of psychic and mediums out there, that's for sure. But I think a lot of people have a hard time knowing if they can do what they say they can do and if they're going to handle sessions with care, compassion, and kindness, if that makes sense. So there's no... Um, formal certification process or training protocol for this type of a thing, which maybe that's fine, maybe it isn't, but I think people can get training and should be able to tell clients, I've had this level of development, these are the kinds of services that I provide, and this is what you can expect in a session. So yeah, that's kind of how I came up, came upon it. It was a rather organic process, and it was it's just something I've always really enjoyed. And it started with a connection to my intuition and just using the, my connection to my intuition in a practical way, if that makes sense, just to help me with my day-to-day -day life, really. So when you're, okay, that's actually the first, thank you so much, because that's actually the first time someone explained to me the difference between a psychic and a medium like I thought I always thought they are the same thing it's just different names you know like so and and how about tarot I know you also talk about tarot a lot that's actually that's another really great question so tarot readers may or may not be psychic mediums okay. they some there are different kinds of tarot readers so there's like intuitive tarot readers who are using the cards to connect to their intuition and they'll read intuitively based off the symbolic imagery that they see so they have kind of their unique relationship to the tarot archetypes and then you might have more academic readers who just study the cards study the history of the tarot study the symbolism and read based off of sort of the literal meanings of those cards, I guess you could say. And because there's a lot of confusion about psychism, mediumship, and tarot, I created a free course that's on my website at bloomingwand.com. It's totally free, and it it's easy, it's quick, it's short, and it explains all of these things. And that's part of my effort to kind of help raise the standard of care and help people understand how these healing modalities work, what you can expect, because particularly in the realm of tarot, there are just lots of different kinds of tarot readers. And I think many of them probably aren't working psychically. 
Mm. Now, there are ones that do. And so if you want to work with a tarot reader, that's something that you would want to to check into is what kind of a reader are they? And again, any kind of training and development or practice within their, you know, progress as a tarot reader to see, um, that's a way you can learn more about their background, if that makes sense, because they're not, it's not a one size fits all thing at all. Right. So let's say if I am facing, I mean, just saying, right, if I'm facing a challenge or I need some, an answer or guidance, like, so if I, so would it be the same, um, would I be receiving the same guidance or answers from a tarot, from a psychic or from a medium, or it would be totally different um, outcome? I feel like if you're going to get a mediumship reading, you're going to co get connected to a spirit communicator or loved one. And that for me does feel a little bit different than a tarot reading or a psychic reading. Now I will tell you that oftentimes when we're connected to a spirit communicator, they will tell us what's going on in your life. So it can have a psychic component to it where they'll be like, Oh, I know you just bought that house or I know you just met this person and they'll give us information about your life today and perhaps some things that are going to be coming up with you in the future as well. So and it's coming from a spirit communicator loved one that we validated is indeed them and that, you know, they're here for you and want to get a message through to you. With psychism and tarot, it's there's no spirit communicator involved, so it kind of has a different kind of tone or style to it where it's going to be probably f focused more on you and your life and it typically falls into categories like personal life your career or your professional life um, personal development tends to be something that comes up a lot uh, within psychic readings and tarot readings like things you can work on to help you get to where you need to go and sometimes there are predictions that can come up about things that might be coming up so they do have a little bit of a different style, and I think the main differentiator is that the the spirit communication with a deceased loved one isn't par necessarily part of a psychic reading or a tarot reading. Um, but then you kind of get into this idea of how do we even get the information, you know, from how do how do psychics get their information? Where does it yeah. come from? And with tarot, we use the cards to help guide the reading. And I love tarot for a lot of reasons. It's part of my personal and spiritual practices. I just think it's an outstanding tool for self-reflection and discovery. I don't think you have to study it yeah. to, to know it. I think we can all look at the symbolic imagery and get a feeling or a sense of like what's represented there and what that could mean for us. So it really is about when you want to get a reading, what are you looking for and what's your intention for the reading? And and do your values align with the value of the practitioner that you're choosing to work with so that your needs are going to get met? Because, you know, readings can be somewhat of an investment for people. Um, there's all different price points, I think, for people to seek out practitioners at different levels. So. I think the most important thing when you're looking to work with somebody or you're wanting a reading is why do I want the reading? What's the intention and what am I trying to understand about my personal experience or situation at this time? And when you go to a reading, it's okay to tell the practitioner, like, here's some things I'd like to know about, but you don't ever want to feed them any information. You want to allow them to demonstrate that they can get information that's accurate and pass it on to you that you can validate. And that way, you know, they're really tapped in, that they're really getting this information, um, not from you, if that makes sense. And then you can kind of enter into a conversation or a dialogue about what you need from the reading. Yeah. Yeah, which is why I love reading so, so much. I have done a lot, <laughs> more than more than I needed to. Um, and every time I go to the session, you know, um, and um, I work with, I work with a lot of uh, many different healers, I, I would call them. And every time they just tell me things that just like blew my mind away that I, I wasn't even aware of, but I know I knew to be true, right? So, and you also talk, mm -hmm. you also talk about, um, you know, like psychic, um, psychic reading, mediumship and tar tarot being, healing modalities why do you think you can use this as modalities to heal someone's you know like emotional or physical yeah wound? 
Well, there's a couple of things. I think particularly with mediumship, it can help people move through grief and know that their loved ones are still very close to them, even though they're not physically here. I've definitely witnessed that through working with clients that it's it's a can bring a lot of relief and comfort. With psychic readings, it can do the same thing, relief and comfort. And it also, I think, gives helps people understand themselves and kind of maybe where they're at in a particular situation or point in time in their life and so that they can make mindful decisions and take mindful action. But I would say that I operate kind of differently than most psychic mediums. So when people work with me, if you come for a mediumship reading, it's just straight, I'm going to connect to a spirit communicator and, um, you know, help you connect with them. Now, when I work psychically or with tarot, I, people have the option to work with me over time. So that's not something that's, I think, standard in the industry. So I'll do some mentoring with them to help them get more connected to their inner guidance system and their intuition so that maybe they don't feel like they have to get as many readings from a, a, someone else, that they can tap into it themselves to navigate their life with greater ease. When we get connected to our intuition, we're inevitably going to find the reasons why we were disconnected in the first place. And that, that can be some pretty big stuff. And I really love helping people understand why they maybe don't listen to their intuition, why they're not as connected to it as they would like to be, and kind of solve that puzzle so that they can feel empowered to move forward and be in communion with their intuitive self because it's your birthright. It's part of you. And I think that all of us could deepen our relationship to it. And usually when people do, they tell me, oh my God, this is the best thing I've ever done for myself. I feel better. I'm doing better. I'm making better decisions for myself. And that just makes me feel so, so happy. Um, when I, when I hear that. And oftentimes I use different tools and techniques that help people understand their emotional selves and, and things as well and work with the parts of themselves that need a little TLC, so to speak, need a little love. Yeah. Okay. Um, there are two questions, um, but I'm going to ask the first question first. So it seems that you possess a lot of different skills, right? And, and so what are some of the spiritual skills that you possess and how do they work? That's really interesting. So I have a pretty interesting background. So I'm a lifelong learner. So I've done a lot of getting a lot of different education, which might not seem related to what I'm doing, but I've got a degree in art and history. Oh, yeah, I've, written a lot I've done Fine yeah, all the yeah. things. Yeah, I'm always learning and growing. I love to learn. But one of the things that was really important to me is I wanted to become trauma informed in my practice to make sure that people because people when I'm working with them over time in particular, some some things can come up and I want to be able to hold a safe space for everybody. And that's always my intention. So I'm always seeking out guidance and training in those areas. And I want to be um making sure that I understand and meet people where they're at, you know, and not push them when they don't need to be pushed or bring things up that wouldn't be appropriate, things like that. And I don't want to be putting my biases onto my clients. So I have to really cultivate my own personal care practices so that I'm coming from a place of neutral and non-judgment as much as I can when I'm working in sessions. But as terms of how it works, we all have more than five senses. So there's something called the clair senses. There's clairvoyance. That's one people hear a lot, which is vision, seeing clear visions, claircognizance, which is just clear knowing, clear sentience, clear gustance. There's a lot of clair senses. And they're just our other than five senses that help us connect to the world of the unseen. And it's just that's kind of, those are the senses that I'm using when I'm working in session with clients. Um, I feel like people use the word clairvoyance a lot, like I'm clairvoyant, I can see the future. Fair enough, but clairvoyance can also just be your mind, like <laughs> giving you images and stuff. So you have to have the ability to discern from what's coming from your ego or your mind and what's coming from your clair senses 
and potentially spirit communicators or the unseen world, if that makes sense. You have to have that level of discernment to know the difference. And so that's why practice and development is so helpful, like being able to go to practice circles or um, have a nice mentor or teacher that can help you understand the difference. So I've learned the difference and I think that's been really helpful. And so I'm usually engaging in several of my Claire senses at one time. So I might get a clairvoyant image, but I'll pair it with clairsentience, which is a feel. It gives me the sense of what this feels like, what it's about, but I'm also really claircognizant. So I just get this, like, I just know. <laughs> and to be honest, that's the trickiest Claire sense because it's like, where does this knowing come from? And I couldn't tell you. I'll just get information. I'll go. I feel like it just bloops into my awareness. I know it's not my mind and I just have to say it, even though it, it might not make sense to me. So there's also the skill and ability to be able to say things you don't know or understand and trust that that information is going to make sense to the sitter. And so being really mindful of the way you say things and the way you communicate and being a clear verbal communicator is also really important. So there's sort of like the ethical component of I can discern between mind and not mind, which is where we want to get the information not from the mind, from these other senses. I can speak it in an articulate way that somebody can understand without personal bias. So there's kind of a couple of different things going on there. Right. So when you when do you choose to reveal your or tell, you know, the things that, that is coming through you? Um so when do you choose to tell the clients or whoever that is in front of you, or when do you choose not to reveal the information? Well, if someone is working with me directly and they've paid for a session, there's consent, right? Like they've consented to receive the information and so I'll just pass it on. I've never gotten information that like I would need to withhold from somebody, if that makes sense. It doesn't work like that. Right. So I, I don't predict deaths. I don't, you know, there's just certain things that wouldn't be helpful to somebody to tell them those things. And frankly, for me, when I'm working, there's nothing that comes through for me that isn't in service to the highest good of who I'm working with. So I had a client who, and I always tell clients, email me, ask me questions after your session. Like I don't just shut the door and be like, see you never. I mean, I want people to feel like they can trust me and learn and grow and ask questions. And so I always tell them, let me know if you need anything. And one client said, oh, you know, I had the most awesome session with you, but a week later I got in a car accident how come you didn't know I was going to get in the car accident? I said, that's a really great question. A, I didn't get any information that that was going to happen. So that's why I didn't pass it on. I, that didn't come up for me. And B, if I had gotten it and told you that, would that have been helpful to you? And she's like, probably not. It probably would have just freaked me out and made me be scared to ever get in my car again. And I said, yeah, I mean, I think that, um, that she was okay. The car accident wasn't, terrible or serious or anything like that. But I think that's a fair question, right? Like how come the car accident didn't come up? And to be honest, it just didn't. And I don't know why, but when I step back and kind of look at it as an individual, just as Emily, I would say if somebody told me you're going to get in a car accident next week, that would just give me anxiety. Yeah, It, would, it wouldn't, be, wouldn't be helpful to me. So I do feel like when we're really in the flow and really connected to our clear senses, we're going to get the right information at the right time for the sitter. And we really have to trust that there is a fair amount of trust, trusting the process and having to believe that our abilities, we can really do what we can do, if that makes sense, which I will say, you know, imposter syndrome, early on in my career definitely came up and sometimes I would think I can't do this what am I thinking I'm crazy that I went through a period of time where I thought maybe I'm just like off my rocker maybe I maybe I'm not well and then um, being in community really helped with that because working with other people who have been doing this longer than me or have are learning with me was really helpful because I was able to go to my community and talk to them and say do you go through this and they're like oh my gosh Yes. Yeah. Yes. We've all gone through it. We'll probably go through it again. And so it was really helpful to have 
that support as I can, and it's, I, I still have it now and it's really important as I kind of continue on on my path because I'll tell you what, I'm always learning and growing and developing and um, trying to evolve, not just as a person, but as a psychic medium and intuitive healer as well. So mm. I hope that that answers the question. Um, and you know, if a piece of information did come through that I felt might hurt or harm, I probably wouldn't pass it on because I'm always trying to help people feel like empowered and feel like they can move forward with ease and like mindful action and things like that. So, but it hasn't happened to me yet. It might have happened to other psychic mediums, but it hasn't happened to me. So, this is a question that actually I like to ask all psychic is that um do you predict your own future? Like do you know what's gonna to happen to you personally? Are you able to see that? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, not about everything, but about some things, like I'll just know. Um I'll just know things and I'll journal about them. And then here's the thing, like me knowing things about me or me knowing things about a client, it's like we both end up in the same boat. We have the information and sometimes there's a space between we get the information and then like what might be predicted or what might be happening. There's that in-between space while things are kind of unfolding, if that makes sense. And we have to wait. We have to wait it out. We yeah. have to see how things are going to unfold. And so we have to learn to become comfortable with sort of what I call the sacred middle or being in the in-between space where we don't want to force things to happen. We don't want to push things to happen. We don't want to try to make information that maybe we've received fit. You kind of have to, I always tell clients and myself, hold it gently, see how it goes and just when you know you'll know what to do when you need to know what you need to do it will just happen and you really have to trust that process now sometimes people get information and when i know things about myself i can get squirrely and be like hurry up i want like come on like i want this thing to come to me and or i'll get like oh my gosh that's not what i thought i don't know if i like that yeah. well, what does that mean from what does that mean am i going to be making some big changes and stuff and that then we can start to grasp and we can start to get ourselves stressed out. So I do think that we have to approach knowings, whether it's about ourselves or other people, very gracefully and really from being calm and centered as much as possible. And that's where personal care practices and spiritual practices can come in to help you kind of move through those times where you do know something and it hasn't happened yet and you kind of like have to wait. So I hope that that, that makes, makes sense. I've definitely known things and um, had to hold that knowledge for many, sometimes many years. That's what I mean about engaging our own intuition and inner guidance system is we can all do that for ourselves. Yeah. It's actually not that hard but it's simple but simple doesn't mean easy if that makes sense the yeah. techniques and the ability to access that are pretty straightforward you have to practice them but what comes up when we're engaging the practices usually reveal areas of self-development for us where we can learn and grow as an individual so yeah it's 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 not like we know all things. And I think that's a misconception about psychic right. mediums is that we can predict all things and we can predict lottery numbers and we can <laughs> pinpoint this and that. And that if I'm talking to you, I'm getting a bunch of information about you and I know all this stuff. It's not like that. Um, we have boundaries around when we're kind of working and when we're not, when we're in a receptive state, then we can right. get information versus when we're not. So um, no, I mean, if I could, predict the lottery numbers i'd go get a lottery ticket and make myself a rich woman i can't do that yeah so so yeah i wanted to ask like we all have the abilities to connect to our higher self or truer self or intuition so what are some of the steps if we are feeling disconnected right now if we feel like mm -hmm. we don't even know who we are you know like um what is our life purpose why are we here so how do mm -hmm. we start to connect to ourselves again tap into our inner wisdom well, there are actually some pretty simple things. Cultivate quiet time alone. It doesn't have to be hours of it. You don't have to sit in meditation like for three hours a day, but 
beginning to every day set aside some time where you're quiet, you don't have your phone, like no, none of that. And you can just kind of sit and maybe look out a window, put a hand on the belly and a hand on the heart and you just fall into the breath. Your breath is the portal to your intuitive self and the portal to sort of the unseen world. And so drawing awareness to the breath is always helpful. That's why it's in a lot of spiritual practices and Buddhism, the yogis do this, like there's a reason why there's breath practices. So, and the other thing I would say is beginning to understand your own awareness. And this is kind of where it's like, what goes on within my awareness? Do I, am I thinking a lot? Do I think a lot? Do I feel a lot? Do I think my feelings instead of feeling my feelings? And so I like to use this technique where I have people visualize their awareness as a sphere. And then maybe they get a piece of paper out. I'm like, what's in your awareness? Like what sensations are with you in your body? Some of them will say stress, worry, some joy. You know, you can get a sense of what fills that awareness. And then we can kind of expand that sphere to include positive things if there's a lot of stuff in there that's heavy or overwhelming or we can kind of unburden our awareness like kind of let some of those things go so there's more spaciousness within it because it is in a passive and receptive state a calm state that we do connect to our intuition and i think that's why people will say oh my god i was in the shower and all of a sudden i just got this information because they're in a passive and receptive state or when they're driving you know people will be driving and be like how did i get to point from point a to point b so that that can be really helpful. Um, I feel like for me being in nature, making time for nature has connected me to my intuition. So nature walks, grounding in nature, taking a forest bath. And again, not with your earbuds in, take them out. Like just listen to what's going on around you and in the environment around you and see how it makes you feel. I would also say that our intuition is not a thinking practice. So we have to learn to create space from our thinking mind. And again, think about all the spiritual lineages that talk about this. So this isn't new. And that's why I say we must all have access to it because look at all the ancient religions and spiritual practices that talk about all of this stuff. There's so many spiritual texts that reference this. So, um, be being able to detach from the thinking mind and not let it be in the driver's seat all the time which again remember how i said it's simple but does simple doesn't mean easy it's not that's not easy to do and that's why i say it's a practice you're not just going to try these things once or twice and be done with it it's something you kind of have to weave into day-to-day life you have to choose these practices or they might choose you and then cultivate them, evolve with them, honor them, and know that communing with your intuitive self, having quiet time alone, paying attention to what's going on in your awareness is in and of itself a spiritual practice. It might be informal, but it is a spiritual practice that will connect you to your spiritual self. It'll probably also connect you to your emotional self and your physical self, your body, because our body never lies and our body holds all of our wisdom. I really do believe that. The mind is an amazing thing. It really is. We need it, obviously, but it doesn't have to be in the driver's seat all the time. We can make decisions based off how we feel rather than how we think. We can lead with our feeling senses rather than our thinking senses, which is kind of the opposite of what we're taught in America anyway. Like, that's not that's not what we're supposed to do. And people often say, think it through. And I'm like, feel it through. (laughs) So it is kind of a different way of moving through life for sure. Yeah, it is. It's very unconventional um, approach to, to, to life. So the the last thing that I want to talk to you about is going back to tarot because um, you also talk about using tarot as self-care and confronting one's Mm -hmm. shed. So what do you mean by that? Well, for me, on um, I like to work with the moon cycles. I always follow the cycles of the moon. It gives me a sense of time and cycles and how it's not linear, like we're different every day. And so for me, I like to pull cards on the full moon and the new moon. Of course, I share this with the public in my newsletter and on my podcast, but that's so that I can demonstrate exactly what I mean about how it can be a tool for self-care and reflection. 
So for me, I just pull three cards and I don't look up any meanings. I always tell people, put those books away, just look at the images and let them speak to you. Soften your gaze and see what comes up. And then I'll journal with it. So I'll use the images as a way to get me into my unconscious or subconscious self and then I'll journal with what I'm feeling just based off of the cards and a simple way you can do that if you're new to tarot or wanting to try this is pull one card whenever you want and just begin by describing what you see so just say there are there's a figure there's a tree there's a red there is a there is a path in front of me there are stars in the sky so you just write everything that you see and when you think you've written everything down keep going <laughs> keep going because okay. you probably see more like go back and back until you really feel like you've seen everything on the card so it's really pretty just straightforward i see this and then you take all the i see or there are statements and turn them into i am I am this or like wow. I am what I see and pay attention to what you feel in your body as you're describing that. Now, when you do this exercise, sometimes you might feel uncomfortable. You yeah. might think I'm not that or you might feel really connected like, oh, my God, I'm in my power. Like it's this is reminding me of a part of myself that I need to pay attention to. You can have any kind of experience just by doing that very simple technique and and kind of journaling with one card. And that's what I, that's what I do. And it's been profound. And I started, I have got my first tarot deck at 19 and I'm 40, I'm 43 now. So it's been, I'm not tired of it. <laughs> I mean, I'm still, I'm still doing it and learning and growing. And, um, you know, and again, that sounds like a simple technique, but it can be challenging. And so on my website in my store, I have a couple guided meditations to guide people through like connecting more deeply with the tarot and they're free. You don't have to pay anything for these things because like I said, I want people to have, you know, access to this stuff and I don't think we need to have a paywall around these things. And those have been helpful for people to be able to listen to like, here's some steps and then do it. Um, cause like I said, just cause it's simple doesn't mean it's easy. Cause right. we react yeah. to the images. We react to the tarot. Like some people are really afraid of the death archetype. It scares them. Some people hate seeing the tower archetype. There are cards. There are archetypes that people have fears around. That's valid. And I would offer this, don't, you don't need to be afraid of any of the archetypes. They're all going to give you something that is of value and that is never intended to scare. And there are other archetypes, obviously, that people love and adore. So that's another thing I would say when you're working with the tarot is to pay attention to how you react to the card, because that's also telling you something. So if something is scaring you, why? Hmm. Why is that? If something is really making you feel good and you're like, yeah, I pulled this card. I love this card. Why? Why is that? What's that about? Um, so it's really being curious about our reactions to the archetypes as much as communing with them. And like I said, there's 78 cards, sometimes more in some decks. And they, if you pull a couple, you're always going to get a different pairing and a different match and they're going to do a different dance. And I think that's why I've had such a long practice and why I've enjoyed it so much is because you just never ending. There's just so many different things that we can learn and grow from. And so for my perspective of using it as a personal care practice. I am not trying to predict anything. I am not trying to know, is this job coming? Does this person like me? That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about using the tarot to get to know you through a, like a journaling practice. And um, that's very different because I think sometimes people use cards because they're stressed out. Right. They're like, I need to know. And I'm like, fair yeah. enough. Like I, we've all been there. Like I've done it too, but you can use it in another way. And so that's why I have my newsletter and my podcast is I really want to demonstrate that aspect of the tarot because I just don't see people doing that. It's like, no, this is a profound tool for healing you. It doesn't have to be all about fate and fortune telling. In fact, I'm telling you the predictive stuff is cool, but it is not 
the best part of readings. It's actually this um, other stuff that comes up that people find the most useful. And that's what I hear from, from clients. And that's what I would say I've also experienced is, is it awesome if I can predict something? Yeah, but clients usually tell me it was that other stuff that really helped me like change the course of my life and make sense of why am I doing what I'm doing? And it's like, I love, that's what I love to hear. I mean, that's why I love doing what I'm doing is I really want people to come home to themselves, to understand themselves because you know, there's one person that we're going to be in the longest relationship with and it's us, yeah, it's yourself. Yeah. Yeah, well, I really love the practice. Thank you so much for sharing that. I personally don't use uh tarot, but I have like a set of angel cards. Um, it's it's simple. Yeah. To, you know, it's just one card. You know, because I want to go and study tarot, right? So, um, mm -hmm. so yeah, I'm gonna start using that practice and see see what what happens. <laughs> yeah, because, please do. Really Let me know how it goes. Yeah. Yeah, I will definitely. So thank you so much, um, uh, for coming and thank you so much for being so generous with your time today. Absolutely. And and before we end, we always end with our final five rapid fire questions. So these are the five questions that I ask all my guests at the end of the show. And every okay. question has to be answered with one word or one sentence maximum. Okay. Okay. The first question is, what is one thing you wish you knew earlier? One thing that I wish I knew earlier was that I could trust myself. I love that. Mm -hmm. Second question, if you could live your life all over again, what would you do differently? I would not spend time, if I could live my life over again, I would make sure to spend time with people who really valued me, mm. loved and valued me, not spend time with people that maybe didn't share my values or didn't respect me. I love the answer. The third question, what is something you're trying to learn or curious about right now? Oh, that's a... That's, oh my gosh, that's a long way. <laughs> so many things. Um, but well, right now, it, this may sound kind of strange, is I'm really working on cultivating um, a deeper sense of trust with the unseen world and knowing that it will always show up for me and just leaning into deepening my mediumship practice. Um, yeah. So I'm still doing training and development. Wow. I'll probably never ending with that. But yeah, because there's always so much more to learn in terms of mediumship. That is interesting. The next question is, if you have five minutes and the whole world is listening to you, what would you say? Love each other. Take care of each other. We're all one. I love that message. The last question is, what brings you the greatest joy? Oh, so many things, music, art, family, children laughing, people being happy, love. I love love in all of its forms. And so that brings me a lot of joy. Beautiful. I love love. That's the first time hearing that. Now, tell my people where they can find you, where is the best place and how is it like to work with you? you know, do you just offer sessions or do you also do coaching? How does it work? Yeah, so you can find me at bloomingwand.com. That's my website. And yes, I do do sessions. People can book a one-off session with me. They can also enroll in a mentoring program with me as well. And my mediumship sessions are available through the Oak Bridge Institute, but that's all of that's on my website. I have so many free resources there for people as well in both my shop and in my online course which is called understanding intuitive healing modalities they're all they're all free and then of course my podcast which is also free which kind of demonstrates some of those tarot practices that we've talked about so there's lots of stuff lots of fun stuff for people to to try out via the website all right, guys, I will put all the links in the show notes below. So make sure you check it out and follow um, Emily, you know, book a session with her, download all the free resources, listen to a guided meditation, right? Make sure you go follow her and thank her for coming to our show today. Also remember to subscribe to this show and leave us a review if you haven't already. And I will always leave you the same way as I leave you with every other episode. Show up. The world needs you and you need you. Thanks for listening. And I wish you all a joyful and amazing day ahead. Bye. Thank you again for tuning into Find Joy Joanne podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, take a screenshot and share it on your IG story and take Find Joy Joanne underscore podcast so I know you are listening. 
and leave us a positive review on Apple Podcasts if you haven't already done so. And remember to hit the subscribe button whether you are listening on Spotify, iTunes, Amazon Music or any of your other favorite platforms. If you love what we are doing and want to become one of our sponsors, you can send me a DM to connect. And thanks for being here. I will see you soon in the next episode.